Now that I have my coffee, we can begin. Not bad. So I'm out here today in the White Mountain National Forest in New Hampshire, and uh, I thought it would be a great idea to discuss one of the most important tools to an outdoorsman of any sort, hunter, piker, forester, whatever, and that would be the compass. Now, despite it being such a prolific and well-known tool, not a lot of people really know a whole lot about compasses and what makes a good compass, how you should use a compass. Uh, because really, most people who love the outdoors, even if they're very uh, avid outdoorsmen, they don't really use them all that much. It's not very often that somebody goes off of a trail unless you are hunting or doing something more, more backcountry. So there's a lot of people that just don't have any real experience with them. Um, so I thought what I'd do is I'd kind of go over what the core attributes of a compass are, a decent compass, what you should look for, and uh, really, at the end of the day, the best compass for you to have on you um, for any of your outdoor work. First, uh, it's easier to start off, and just to get it out of the way, with the compasses that you absolutely should not use. Keychain compasses, throw it away. McDonald's toy compasses, throw it away. Compasses that are on any sort of like survival kit or on the, the butt end of a knife, not going to help you that much. Get yourself a decent compass. And by decent compass, I mean one that has a 360 degree bezel so you can actually take a proper azimuth. So really the gold standard is a, a lensatic compass like this one or a base plate or mirror compass like this one. So let's go over these two, uh, the pros and cons of each and which one is the best for you. Let's start off with the Lensatic Compass. Now this one is a Kamenga US military compass. Uh, these are probably the most common. There are others that are kind of designed to look like this that are a lot cheaper. However, if you are going to spring for um, the Lensatic Compass, I'd probably recommend you get this one. I think, like I said, this is the most common. So as you can see, there's uh, two degree systems in here. There's the more familiar 360 degree on the inside, and then uh, mills which I believe is a military unit on the outside. For more recreational or <clears throat> even professional work, you probably want to stick to the degrees. Um, and, you know, notably, that does kind of create a problem because having a lower radius, a smaller radius on the inside creates lower resolution. So if you want a more accurate measurement of the angle, you're going to be a little bit impeded, not too bad, but a little bit. Um, second of note, it is not oil-filled, it's just the floating on air there on a, on a pin and when you close this lens here it comes up against the glass and kind of locks it shut to protect it and I think you know that's more of a military function uh, to protect it against a lot of bangs and bumps from paratroopers or what have you um, so that's a that's a little nice feature it makes it a little more rugged on the end here we have a scale and measurement tool for uh, 1 50,000 meters so if you happen to have a map that has that scale, which is going to be pretty uncommon in the United States, uh, yeah, that, that could help you out quite a bit. Um, now, another kind of cool thing about this compass is that if you look on the back here, there is a radiation symbol. And uh, to be honest with you, that is pretty much the entire reason I bought this when I was 16, because I thought that was really cool. Uh, what that means is that this is actually a tritium compass. Uh, the dial is coated with an isotope of, uh, I think, hydrogen uh, that is luminescent, so it will glow green, very bright green. Um, so if you're doing any sort of navigation at night, which, let's be honest, you probably aren't, uh, that, that can be a really nice feature. One thing that is worthy of note about that, though, is that the half-life of tritium is about, I think it's like a decade or something like that, don't quote me on that. But this one is now, I think, 13 years old, so it's not as bright as it used to be. Um, and that's okay, because the amount of times I've needed to navigate at night with this have been, I think, zero. That has not really come up all that much. So that's pretty much it, you know, and, and it, you have a bezel that rotates, so you can kind of walk somewhere, and um, when you're navigating, you can match the north arrow to that piece right there, like that. They're, they're both tritium. Um, oh, getting a little bit of wind here, sorry about that. Whoops. And yeah, 
that is kind of the no frills compass that just works next up we have the base plate or mirror compass there's a lot of different models of these on the market this one is a silver ranger um, there's also sunto uh, they have they have a lot of different individual models some come with a mirror some are just the base plate there um, but you know they all they all have very similar functions uh, so let's kind of go over what these are what the, the features these have and um, yeah why honestly I think these are the best compasses available so we'll start off uh, we just have the 360 around the bezel we have uh, a scale for to, to, to 125,000 which is probably one of the most common scales in the United States you have measurements for meters and inches magnifying glass which would be great for reading maps or if you need to starting fires uh, have a pretty good system for taking your azimuth which both compasses have I mean that's not really too hard of a feature to have but there's one feature on this that really puts it above the rest and why I think this is the best compass to have and that if you notice the north arrow on the face is offset from the bezel that is declination adjustment there's a little screw there that you can use to um, adjust the declination whether it's east or west depending on what part of the country you're in and uh, if you're doing any sort of navigation work that is crucial with the military lensatic compass you have to repeatedly adjust every time you take an azimuth and make sure that you're going um, magnetic north or true north or whatever you need to do so with this you you're just reading true north off a map and then it's automatically adjusting for you the magnetic north to true north so you don't have to do any of that and especially when you're tired in the evenings trying to head home that can really save you a lot of trouble prevent you from getting lost even more than maybe you already are so definitely something to be aware of so those are our two compasses now anything that this one can do this one can do and then some with the exception of the tritium dial which you have to ask is that really that important I mean even in the military I would think these days that's a fairly outdated feature with um, night vision goggles I'm sure it gives off some uh, infrared light which you wouldn't want to be using at night so um, I'm not sure how much use that actually has so you might think well okay I'll get this one because this is the best compass available then and it does everything I need to and it's reliable and everything else not so fast this one has as great as it is and you know this is kind of the standard in the professional world if you're a um, yeah forester or uh, doing any sort of outdoors work that might um, involve you going out into the back country you're going to be using a compass very similar to this um, but they have one crucial drawback and that is that they are plastic and they are oil filled um, I went hunting with a couple friends who were inexperienced this past fall uh, one of them was an avid hiker but had no experience using a compass off trail the other one was my brother who had neither experience hunting um, nor hiking nor using a compass and my brother had one of these without the mirror it was just the, just the base plate and um, on the last day as he was coming home something happened he tripped whatever the face cracked and all the oil leaked out and then the needle was sticking to the side of the uh, of the face and it, it just it didn't work that's a problem that's a big problem this compass is your lifeline this is how you get home you need to be able to um, have this be reliable you need to be able to use it uh, in the worst case scenario and if it breaks and cracks uh, it's no good it, you're just going to get more lost so would I recommend this compass no I wouldn't recommend this one either this one is a little too basic it is going to confuse you if you don't continually adjust for declination and um, it's, it's just a little more limited you can use it fine but it's a little more limited so what would I suggest if you possibly can I'd get both I always keep this one locked in the bottom of my bag but I always have this one out front 
using it to navigate. If anything happens to this compass, if I lose it, because, you know, they switched to these stupid little clips that I'd hate and one day I'm going to lose it because that comes off. If anything happens to this, I still got this indestructible compass that is also radioactive. <laughs> uh, now, it, you know, these run for, I think, like almost $100. These are around 30 or 40 So, you know, obviously this one's cheaper, and if you don't have the cash on, you just get this. But uh, if you possibly can, and especially if you're doing anything out by yourself, um, going way deep out into the backwoods, it absolutely is worth it to get two, because I promise you, if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. And so it's good to have an indestructible compass and a more practical multi-use compass. Oh, I also forgot to mention too that this one has a clinometer to, to measure angles. Uh, that's useful if you're getting like heights of trees. For navigation it doesn't really do much, but it's kind of neat. Good if you're doing property management stuff. For what it's worth, I, I mean I told the story about my brother and his compass. I mean I've used this thing for, not this actually, this is fairly new, um, but I've used this style of compass uh, the Silver Ranger in particular, for eight years, I think, out in the woods, the same compass, and I've never, I never broke, never had any issues with it. I worked with other foresters who had the similar model. Uh, I think that was kind of a fluke. Nonetheless, it's scary enough to me that from now on, I will always carry two compasses. So, something to consider. And uh, hopefully that helps you make the decision about which compass is best for you, um, or which two compasses. All right, well, it's starting to rain fairly hard now, and I have a long trip back, so we'll keep it at that for now. Um, so hopefully that helps you make the decision about which compass is best for you. And um, yeah, see you next time.